Hi, this is Chris Wall at The Wall Network. Today we're going to go over some of the differences in vSphere Web Client 5.1 compared to vSphere Web Client 5.5. So to do this demonstration, I have a Chrome browser open with two tabs, one with the Web Client 5.1, the other one's 5.5. Unfortunately, both tabs say Web Client because, well, that's what they are. So let's log in to 5.1 first. I'm just going to log in using my AD account for the lab right here. And go over some of, I guess, some of the layout and annoyances that I felt were pretty prevalent in 5.1. If you've been using 5.1, which apparently is a small percentage of users, uh, you'll probably have more than the list that I have. But for the most part, I found a lot of people have not even touched 5.1 web client just simply because they just haven't needed to. And I feel that's going to change in 5.5. So now I have a little bit of a different config than stock. I've got orchestrators actually configured, infrastructure navigator. I've got a couple other pieces installed as well. But for the most part, this is a pretty stock install. It's vCenter running on a Windows server with two cores and four gigs of RAM. It's running a small lab. That should be plenty. Unfortunately, with the web client, you'll first notice whenever you try to navigate through anything, you get to deal with this sliding activity so it slides one way it slides the other way it's cool about the first two times and then quite frankly it just eats up processing cycles and wastes my time another thing i've always been kind of annoyed with is under the single sign-on configuration if we go to the identity sources down here we've got the default domains with this spinning wheel of death that just never goes away i've uh, so that's that's annoying and then just generally the speed at which you use the web client. If I just go to vCenter to look at the objects in here, you know, if I click on hosts and clusters, which is kind of the legacy view, you get these little spinning wheels. Like they just took a while to load. You know, you can watch it building, building, building. You know, it's it was already selected on the infrastructure navigator virtual machine, and we're still waiting. Okay, just now, I finally got the information to pull up, and that speed kind of varies depending on like I can pull up another. Let's pull up a host. That's fun. Pull up a host. And just, you know, watching it, let's go to summary, watching it build, it just feels a bit a bit sluggish having to wait. You know, this is all productivity time that's being flushed down the toilet right now while I wait for all this stuff to populate. So, quite frankly, with the size of my environment and how little taxed the vCenter server is, and which is also running the web server, um, it really shouldn't be going this slow, and it's quite annoying. The other pet peeve I had was in the inventory list, You'll notice a couple things are missing. Templates, vApps, virtual machines, you know, that's all kind of stuff I probably care about. If I want to look at the VMs, I really have to go to the inventory trees view or look at the children uh, of these items here. So it could be a lot better. Let's transition to the 5.5 version of the piece for web client, which is a release candidate, but it, it should be pretty close to end state here. And I'll go ahead and log in using that same directory, uh, Active Directory account. Uh, I've already basically set up SSO to authenticate myself into this environment. There's really not anything in here. It's running the vCenter uh, server appliance, if you've noted the name of the URL I'm connecting to. And I've diminished it down about 3 gigs of RAM, which should be more than plenty in my opinion, considering it's really not doing anything. And look at some of the differences. So the first thing, I, I hate the, the slidey action of the sidebar here. That's actually gone now. It just refreshes the area and comes up with the data you need. Thank you. Because quite frankly, the slidey thing, I always found it extremely annoying, especially if you work in a remote environment where it just kind of pukes on the WebEx or whatever it is. So that's gone. You'll notice the configuration of the administration area is a little different now. Uh, where some things have been moved. Users and groups has moved down to the single sign-on area. And now we have configuration with a slightly different uh, view to it. Now we just have the identity sources. Uh, this this tab is, is over here uh, as the default now. But I've clicked on identity sources. There is no list of default domains. So the default domain list is now gone. You get to pick one identity source to be your default. And that you can see here has the word default next to this domain. I've chosen that to be the default. It no longer logs in in kind of an uh, ordered list from one to the next. Uh, if you want to change it, like if I want to change it to the new domain that's included with SSO called vSphere.local, formerly known as system-domain, you can actually hover over this little globe with the arrow. And that will let you change the default domain. So that's a little bit different. Now let's kind of go over some of the responsiveness in the vCenter environment. So you'll see 
Now, I, I know I only have one host in here right now because I've just been more futzing around with it, but you'll see how quickly that cascaded and loaded. And if I, I open up this one host, I've already got it open. This is a default install of ESXi 5.5, but it, it opened up really, really quickly. I didn't have to you know, mess around with waiting for the screen to refresh for 10 seconds or so. So I've noticed a pretty good speed increase there. If I click on different objects, they tend to they tend to load a lot faster. You know, the data loads. It's not as fast as I probably want it to be. It's not instantaneous, which is where I set the bar, but it's certainly not making me want to gouge my eyeballs out like the old one. You'll also notice a few UI improvements that I like. First is this little doolally here. It looks like a clock with an arrow going around it to visit the recently visit visited objects. So you can see things that I've been playing with recently throughout my sessions, which is kind of cool. These aren't things I've been playing with just in this session, but the past one as well. Uh, and formally, what you used to do is you click the drop down arrow here, and it would give you kind of a list of where you were. So the list of where you were is actually kind of moved over here, or the list of the hierarchy is here. So I can see the vCenter server, the, ho uh, the data center, and the cluster has moved over to this little hierarchy button. And this gives me kind of a history of what I've been playing with, which is kind of cool if you're bouncing back between some objects, you can quickly go back and forth between two things that have nothing to do with one another without having to open a second pane or something like that. Now, last thing I want to show you is there's actually a lot of cool things in the inventory list now, including, hey, who, who it's crazy, right? Virtual machines. Imagine that. <laughs> who would ever want to look at those? So virtual machines, vApps, and templates are all in there, which is great because they were hidden before, which didn't make a lot of sense to me. Those are kind of the three. I mean, vApps you probably don't play around with a lot unless you have these appliances, but virtual machines and templates are probably something you deal with on a day-to-day -day basis a heck of a lot more than data store clusters, resource pools, or data centers. So it makes sense to have those on there. I kind of feel like maybe these should be higher on the list, but that's cool that they're there. And quite frankly, I like that uh, you can click on these objects and you'll be able to get a list of all your virtual machines, what they're doing. I don't have any virtual machines running right now, but that's how that works. So a couple cool things included with the 5.5 environment. You know, quite frankly, I'm still kind of displeased to see that it's a flash front end. I think that's a dying technology. I would be much more enthusiastic over something running HTML5. Uh, let's, get with, let's get with the times and run some current front end technology. And the speed still needs some more improvement, but it is an improvement. And if you're being kind of forced into the 5.5 web client, at least it's not horrible like the 5.1 environment was. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed the content, be sure to click the like button. Don't miss out on my future videos. Become a YouTube subscriber today. Do you crave more content on home labs, technical certifications, deep dives, product reviews, and geeky shenanigans? Wall Network is also available in blog format at wallnetwork.com.